we have four independent eyewitness accounts of the death and burial of Jesus Christ. And they all seem initially to point to the same conclusion, that Jesus' mission has failed. For the Romans who are present crucifying him, he's another failed Jewish Messiah and not a particularly impressive one. He hasn't led a successful uprising. To the Jewish priests whose jealousy put Jesus in that position in the first place, he's a troublemaker who's failed to make trouble or at least failed to make lasting trouble. He hasn't successfully upset the apple cart. They've restored stability. To the everyday man or woman on the street, he was a popular figure. They'd followed him. Perhaps some of them had been among the crowd who welcomed him into Jerusalem with shouts of joy. They'd thought that he was a prophet and many of them hung on his every word. And yet here he was, crucified, so failed as a popular figure and also rejected by the religious authorities, so failed as a man of God. And then for those poor disciples, on whom it must have been the hardest, he was that figure of hope. He was the Messiah, the Christ, the Chosen One, the Holy One of God. They had so many titles that they'd ascribed to him over the years they'd been with him. And yet he, he was dying and they couldn't square that with what they believed. And they also thought that he had failed. We read of one man who's leaving with his friends from Jerusalem, just saying so sadly, we'd all put our hope in him. We thought that he was the one who would redeem Israel, but now he's been crucified. So if Jesus's death and his burial is this scene of despair and disappointment and failure, then why is it that we still talk about it 2,000 years later? Why is it that billions of people across the world still find significance in it? It must be an event of worldwide and historical significance. I believe, yes, it is, absolutely. Have you ever seen a depiction of Jesus with a crown of thorns on his head? Perhaps you've wondered what that means. It's more than just a symbol of mockery put on him by the Roman soldiers, although that was one aspect of it. But right from the very beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, thorns are a symbol of what happens to the world as a result of our wrongdoing. God says when Adam and Eve choose to throw aside God's ways and to follow their own ways, the ground will produce thorns now. In other words, everything that used to be pleasant and easy and fruitful will now come with difficulty because you're refusing my ways. What we see when Jesus wears that crown of thorns on his head is Jesus offering to us all the results of your wrongdoing, all the results of you going your own way. I will take on myself if you want. And that's the offer that he makes to people today. Another reason why Jesus' death and burial is still talked about 2,000 years later is that it didn't end there. To hear the end of the story, to watch the seventh video of this pilgrimage and see how the story truly ends, we'd love to invite you along to an Easter Sunday service. There's details on this website, just go to the menu at the top of this page and choose Easter services and there's a full list of dates and times and details of who to let know if you want to show up in person and which ones you can attend online. We'd just love you to finish this pilgrimage by joining us on Easter Sunday to hear the end of the story and hear the message of hope that flows out of Easter.